You know what y'all, I'm going to be real honest with you and I've never had to do this before on a video, but the black gays, I'm not fucking with y'all today. I've heard so much doubt cast and negativity from black gays as it relates to this Jesse Smollett attack situation than I have from any other group of people as it related to this boy being attacked by somebody wearing MAGA hats, so on and so forth. And the question that I have for the black gays who think it's funny to push and perpetuate this narrative that, oh, he was out on, on the hookup app trying to meet Trey and Trey beat his ass or he got jumped trying to meet a date at two o'clock in the morning. Why is that narrative so important for you? Why must that hold true in order for this thing to make sense for you? For me, it's very telling. Just because that's what your ass is up doing at 2 o'clock in the morning on any given trip you go on or any given city you travel to, that does not mean that is what that boy was doing. You see what I'm saying? Here's the thing that I don't understand, and here's what the Me Too movement and the R. Kelly thing has taught me. We as people have got to stop re-victimizing people when they come clean about some sort of trauma or experience that they've had, then you make them the victim again by casting all this doubt, trying to poke holes in stories, and trying to reverse engineer this boy's story to fit your sick, twisted mind. Sure, there are aspects of the situation that don't make sense to a logical person. But riddle me this. What random act of violence is ever steeped in logic? Was it logical what R. Kelly was doing? None of it is ever logical. You see what I'm saying? Y'all cast all this doubt on people who were talking about R. Kelly and shit. Fast forward 900 years later, we found out the motherfucker was doing that and then some. You see what I'm saying? So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not concerned with why was he out at 2 o'clock in the morning or he must have been meeting the date. And for those of y'all who are on this whole Tell because I saw a video somewhere somebody posted something in the headline like Jesse Smollett needs to tell the truth um, because there are real people out there who have been victimized and gay bashed in the gay community. Here's my thing. For the sake of argument, let's just say that Jesse's story is not true. It's embellished. It's slightly fabricated. For the sake of argument, it doesn't change the fact that that boy was attacked. So I'm going to give you your jello pudding. Okay, he was going to meet Trey. He was going to get fucked all in his ass and in between his butt. Fine. Now what? Now is that enough for you to feel some sympathy for the fact that this boy was attacked in the middle of the night? in an unworn fashion, I'm not understanding what changing the narrative does for some of you guys. And it is just so ugly that the black gays are the main ones pushing this narrative that he was out on a hookup app trying to meet a date. First and foremost, let me break this hookup app shit down to y'all for people in the entertainment business. Justy Smiling is not on Grindr and he's not on Jacked, okay? I'm Funky Dineva Ross, and my level of popularity, I don't, you notice I don't even call myself celebrity, I say popular. My level of popularity comes nowhere near close to Jussie Smollett's, and I'm not on Jacked 
or a grinder. Not that I don't want to be. I, yeah, I enjoy flirting and hooking up with a random boy every now and again and looking at a random picture of a big old dick or a big nice old ass or showing up my big old dick or showing up my nice old ass. I enjoy all those things too. But let me tell you what happened to me. Seven, seven years ago, seven years ago, I was on Grinder when I was living at the 12th Hotel in Atlantic Station, six, seven years ago, in my condo on Grinder, calling myself doing everything in my power to conceal my identity. And my photo was just like me from the, the bottom of my chin to like my torso, and I do have a tattoo stomach. And somebody wrote, Yes, God, Nessa girl. From that moment on, I delete, I never had Jack. I delete, maybe I did. I deleted Jack and or Grinder. Why? Because I am somebody who was popular on the internet. And if somebody recognized me from here to here, oh my Lord, when I unlock these private pictures, that is fodder for the blogs and for the internet. Somebody of Justice Smollett's caliber is not fucking tweeting, tweeting around and playing with y'all asses on fucking Grinder and Jack. Cut it out. Not to mention, I met Jussie and his longtime lover at the Gentleman's Bar. That boy is in a committed relationship. Not to say that that means anything because you know how y'all gays do. You know, a boyfriend for y'all simply just means somebody to go to the movies with and give you no car, have an ass a ride. Nevertheless, people on Justin Smiley's level, when they want to hook up late night like that, they've got handlers to do that, or there are very small, intimate circles of friends. Let me tell y'all something. That boy and them people stay at that goddamn hotel in Chicago. They've been staying there in that area now for six, seven years, however long the damn show's been on. You don't think that boy got a smarter way to get dates? You don't think that boy can't call Mike and be like, hey, what up with your homeboy Toby? I met at the party last week. Hey, yeah, tell him I'm in town. Tell him slide through. Hey, what up with your friend? Oh, I need you to hook me up with somebody. He's not getting on Grinder and then walking out in the middle of the night. Now, granted, there are some things that don't make sense, okay? It's freezing cold, negative below 20 degree weather, got a hoodie on, says he was walking up and down the street the subway. You know, uh, it doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do, but it doesn't seem far-fetched either. Any of y'all that follow me, y'all see I'm always out in the wee hours of the goddamn morning fooling around and playing around and, and working. And working. It's not far-fetched for my ass at 3, 4 in the morning to be at some random gas station. I'm always at Taco Bell in the middle of the night. So I'm not understanding what is so hard to believe that this boy was potentially going to get himself something to eat. Nevertheless, and going back to me being generous, even if he's lying, the fact that he attached his lie to a homophobic attack helps our cause as a community. Helps our cause. It helps our cause. It started a national conversation about some of the things in which many of us have either dealt with or are going to deal with in the near future. So I'm not understanding even in the midst of his alleged lie, it helps us. So why can't y'all just shut up and ride the wave? And I think the thing that bothers me the most is that y'all think it's funny. Like a lot of people think it's funny. And I'm sorry, everybody ain't hoeing around. Everybody ain't sleeping around. And I'm not trying to come at y'all on a self-righteous I'm better than because I've done it. Back in the day, you know, I've done the, the BGCs and the Adams for Adams and the Jacks and the Grinders. I think it's a gay boy rites of passage. But many of you may not believe it because you're too busy fucking throwing sex parties to pay your rent and doing everything else with God knows who off the apps. But everybody ain't promiscuous or ain't promiscuous 
no more. God knows I slutted out my 20s, bitch. I laid it low and spread it wide. But these days, these days, all these square feet I got, all I got to lose, this Asian libido, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for no huffing and puffing. Ain't nobody got time for bringing random ass people into their damn house, letting them know what they st where they stay, especially when you on the caliber of Justin Smollett. And here's the other thing, too. Why I say Justin ain't out there hooking up with no, with no damn dates on no damn hookup apps. Y'all already know how hookup app conversation go. How you get down, you top or bottom, how big your dick, nine inches cut, what you like, where I can come in, you want it safe or raw. Do y'all honestly think Justin Smollett is having a paper trail, uh, a phone trail like that, uh, as big as he is and, and as much of a, let me explain the celebrity society that we live in right now? As much as my ass want to do it with the damn boys, the ones I know, the ones I've been fucking since 94, I don't have them type of conversations no more on the text. Okay? So, cut it out. Everybody is not you. And even if that narrative, for whatever ungodly reason, happens to be the truth, so what? He was still attacked in a manner in which most gay people tend to get attacked these days. So let the universe use this damn boy as a vessel to do its will, whatever that may be. And if you are not going to get out there on the front lines and do the work, or if you don't have the platform and the capacity to spread the type of awareness that this situation is spreading that is positive for our community, then please do not slow down the momentum by casting doubt upon this boy in this situation that those who want to be against the gay community already can latch on to and use to discredit what is going on right now. Wake up, people. Wake up. Because the thing about it is, it's suspect and it's questioned if his ass was on the hookup app. But it's for damn sure that your ass is and was. So what happens the next time your ass leave your house and go to some random ass dick picture that your ass saw when they unlock their private pictures and somebody knock your ass upside the damn head? You're going to want justice. You're going to want peace. You're going to want change. But the thing about it is your little simple, small, don't nobody know, work in the mall ass don't have no platform. So your case, if the police even take your report, is going to sit on a desk while his is able to impact and, and cause change. Let that man do his work in peace. Get the fuck out the way and learn when it's time to laugh and when it's time to just shut the fuck up. And with that being said, y'all have a good day. Bye. You know what? I hung up the line too quick. There's one more point that I want to make. As black gay men, I, I truly believe this. In America, the worst thing you could possibly be is a black gay man. And you want to know why? Because we are a double minority. We already know in this racial climate what it means to be black. Then what it means to be a black man. But then to be gay on top of that, we are a double minority who has no support from the larger world, the white world, and then two, based on family histories and, 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 and mainly religion, we don't even have the support of our own people, people who look like us. So oftentimes, gay communities are so tight-knit because we tend to be all we've got. That being said, guys, that is more the reason we need to stand behind this brother and not quadruple outcast this boy. Keep in mind, black men, black gay men, 
are a double minority. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Come together for more than just fucking our hookup apps. Stand for something. Stand in solidarity with somebody for something for once in your damn life. Like so many of us come from communities that are so riddled with discord that the whole notion of standing in solidarity with somebody behind some shit that matters is just so fucking foreign to y'all. And I think some of y'all, the word solidarity make you itch. What are you doing? In 2019, we using our brain. In 2019, we doing critical thinking. Critical thinking. Remember, black gay men, double minority. Marinate on that.